every villain that you see in a film just has some crazy quirky pair of glasses and this is those. I'm loving it. Hello my loves and thank you for joining me, it's Kirsten and we are off to another weekly vlog. Haven't decided what I'm reading in this weekly vlog yet, I did have a plan because I've got the rest of my TBR and on there I have a Dark Academia vlog and a murder mystery which you chose, so that was the plan to read those two. Regardless the murder mystery will happen this week because it is the book that you chose so I will always make that a priority. However, last week well technically a few minutes ago I wrapped up last week's vlog and I was reading Before the Devil Breaks You and that is so good. It's the third book in a series and also in last week's vlog you would have seen that I got sent The King of Crows by Libba Bray and this was part of a giveaway and this is the fourth and last book in the Diviner series and I'm really really tempted to actually just carry on straight away because I adore this series so much. It is almost 550 pages long though and the text is really quite small so I know it's going to be a bit of a longer one to get through but I am really really tempted because of the way it all ended it was just so explosive so much happened things have gone wrong I really want to know what's happening to certain characters like I just I really really want to read it so I'm tempted to ignore my TBR and read this one and then fit in the classic mystery book which again you all chose or do I stick to my TBR and go with For Your Own Good by Samantha Downen which is the Dark Academia pick. I actually really wanted to read this while I was on holiday last week. It it was just really random. I was doing a romanticy readathon. I will have the vlog linked if you haven't seen it. But I wasn't feeling it and I really wanted to read this book. And I thought as soon as I finished Before the Dub Breaks You, that's the one I'm going to go with. But then the ending has me so hooked that I, I now don't know which one I want to go with. And it would be too ambitious of me to say I'm going to get these two read and the classic mystery. It's not going to happen. So I really need to decide which one and I need to decide soon-ish because I have got work today and I want to take one of these with me. I, I just don't know which one. So it's a really hard decision because like I say I was really in the mood for this last week. Well I say last week it was literally a few days ago for me but I was really really in the mood. This one's about an English teacher where dark shenanigan things are happening. Is it more I'd say dark academia but they're the thrillers basically. Um, but yeah so I was really really feeling this. Or do I carry on with the fantasy series and finish my second complete series this year? It would be fantastic because then that's two series finished this year and we're only in the second month. So I think that's a really good go in. I don't know. I, I really, really don't know what I'm going to do. So I guess we're going to find out. I will probably update you tomorrow with what one I read. But before that, yesterday, before I went to work, I had to go and collect some books that I had pre-ordered because of course I went out of my way to get the brand new editions of the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Mars and the covers are stunning so I'm going to quickly show you those because I adore them so yeah I, I actually did I bought the complete hardback set because I just thought they were fantastic and my old paperbacks like they are the originals like they're really really old and they are falling apart and it's a series that I absolutely adore so I knew that when this came out I was going to treat myself so I did <laughs> one of the most expensive purchases I've done but it was worth it so this is the Assassin's Blade absolutely stunning I know some people really don't like these covers but I think they are gorgeous they are absolutely stunning in my opinion and under the dust jacket there isn't anything on it, it's just a nice blue cover and it's got blue end pages. Perfect. I, yeah, I love it. I'm actually thinking to do a reread of this series because I love this series and I didn't reread it last year. But I did read A Court of Thorns and Roses last year, I think. I don't know. But yeah, love that. Loving this colour scheme. Fantastic. I was tempted to get the paperback editions of it, but the paperback editions have that sticker that you can't remove and I was like no we're not doing that. Then Throne of Glass. The one and only. Absolutely stunning and again this time dark blue end pages with a dark blue cover. Do I wish they had done something under the dust jacket for these? Sure and maybe some sprayed edges would have been cool but at the same time I think 
I, I don't really mind because I've never had hardback editions of these books and we're actually saying that I do have a special edition of this first book but that's not the point. Moving on we have Crown of Midnight and I love this colour scheme absolutely stunning and this one we have that same kind of burgundy colour on the inside and it's the same colour on the hardback but yeah beautiful series if you don't know what this series is about it is a YA series this is Aerophile which is the third one again lovely loving the fact that we have bird and the dragon I think yes that's that's actually really good like so many hints to what's going to happen fantastic um and again this one is orange so yes YA fantasy series the first three books I would argue are very much YA fantasy the original tropiness that you get and then there's a prequel which is a short story collection which is the first book that I showed you the assassin's blade so I would oh my god these are heavy read it like this. So Throne of Grass, Crown of Midnight, Air of Fire, and then Assassin's Blade. And I find that for me, I've always really enjoyed that. That's the way it was printed and published, like that's the way it was intended. And I agree, I think that works. Then we have Queen of Shadows, and this is where things really start ramping up a level. It's absolutely fantastic. I just, yeah, it's great. And I love this cover. And again, all the little details of things in it just really help go with the rest of the series. And this one is red. But yeah, it gets very expansive very quickly and I love it. Then we have Empire of Storms, which uh, again, I just, I'm going to keep saying it for all of them. I love these covers so much. And we have a nice purple beautiful and then you have a tower of dawn which is technically a companion novel it follows a side character that's now a main character and it goes off on this quest do you technically need to read this part of the series i suppose for one information that they find out sure there's a couple of things but also no not necessarily this one is either some people's absolute favorite or they don't tend to really like this one but the events of these two go along side by side and the reason why I want to do a reread is because I want to read these in tandem. So read chapter one of one and then it, do it alongside each other. I think that would be fantastic. I've never done that and I think I would enjoy this story so much more. Tower of Dawn I liked but I did find it a little bit slow. So I feel like by reading these two books side by side it's going to be a really fun time. So that's the plan when I do this reread to read those in tandem. And then it all finishes with Kingdom of Ash and again absolutely stunning cover and this one has this kind of grey end pages which actually I didn't say I think this one would be yeah this orangey colour. So that's those books that was my little treat myself and I have no regrets I love them so much so I'm going to put those away I'm going to do a bit of food shopping so I'll bring you along for that and yeah we're going to decide what book I actually take with me to work I have no idea. Put your comments below of what one you think it's going to be let me know do you like these new throne of glass covers because i i really do i actually really like them i've never really liked the person on the cover let me get one original new personally i prefer the new ones i think they're stunning so many people are saying oh but it doesn't show it's ya they look more like adult fantasy covers like it's a cover i i don't think that matters but that's just my personal opinion on it but yeah I mean this this is the classic but I, I don't I don't love it but this this I love this is absolutely stunning and beautiful and I'm so excited I have some beautiful hardback editions now because as I say these paperbacks they're old they're ragged and yeah but yeah okay anyway I'm gonna carry on going on but yes let me know what what cover style do you prefer out of those and I hope you're all doing well. Let me know what you've been up to, what you've been reading, you know, all the usual things. And okay, I'm gonna go and we're gonna do some food shopping and I'll update you tomorrow of what book I actually pick up. I'm really torn between the two. Like, it's gonna be a hard decision. Maybe I'll just bring both. No, I can't bring both. I don't, I don't know how I'm gonna do that decision yet, but we'll get there.
yesterday I got practically zero reading done. It was so, so hectic at work. I thought it was going to be quite a nice relaxing day, but no, not at all. It was so busy and everything that could go wrong went wrong. It was one of those days. I just, yeah. But the book I did take was The King of Crows and I read the first chapter. That is all I read. And I really liked it. I'm really pleased that I've picked up this one and gone straight back into this world because yeah, I really wanna know what's gonna happen. I have so many thoughts and I just, I need to know. But I, I didn't, I, I didn't get much read at all. I got up to page eight. That, that was the grand total of reading that got done yesterday. But it is what it is. I will be continuing on with that today. Hopefully I'll make a good, decent chunk of progress today because it is my day off. And then tomorrow, like, I'm on earlies for five days, so it's going to be a tiring one. I probably won't update you tomorrow because of the fact that I'll be so tired, so we'll see. Plus, after work, I need to go pick up my glasses and do things, so I don't know. Maybe if I'm not feeling too tired after I've done all of that, then we'll see. But yeah, for now, I'm going to focus on reading King of Crows for today. I am meeting my partner a little bit later. We're going out for a meal out, which will be really nice. And a nice little just wander around London because we haven't, I feel like we haven't done that in a little while, but yeah, so that's gonna be good. Although yesterday, as I mentioned, I did go food shopping and as you saw, because I filmed it. And then right at the end, I saw this. So in my local Tesco's, there is a book swap area where loads of people come in, they donate all their books and stuff, and generally people pick up a couple books as they drop stuff off. And this book was there. And this is The Monster by Seth Dickinson. And this is the second book in the series, the first book being The Traitor. Now, I actually don't mind this cover. I really like it. I think it's really cool. The first cover, the, the yeah, I, I've, I've complained a lot about it on this channel, but this looks really good. Have I read the first book? No, but I have such high hopes. I think it's going to be such a good book. And of course, I couldn't pass up the fact that the second book was just sat there. So I've now got that as well, but I'm, I'm very excited. I thought that was absolutely amazing. I normally have a quick scan of the library thing in the store just as I'm going past. Generally, there isn't always something there, but it's always worth a little scan. And today there was, I don't normally film me looking through that. I probably should have, but I was on the phone to someone and then I can't film on my phone and be on the phone to them at the same time. So yeah, I couldn't film that but this was such a solid find. I was so, so happy with it. So yeah, that that was yesterday. I didn't manage to read much, but I did find a pretty cool book and then yeah, I'm going out today. So that's it. That's all the update is. I, yeah, haven't, haven't read much. So it's gonna, it's a really quick update for once. Uh, but yeah, I'll probably pop back in. I don't know when, maybe Tuesday, maybe tomorrow if I'm not too tired but I do have a couple of hours before I need to go out. So I'm thinking I'm going to read a little bit of this, start making some progress and then head out. And obviously I will take you with me with what we do today. We're actually going out for an Indian, which will be nice. We're on the hunt for a good Indian in London because we just haven't found one that we really like. So fingers crossed, this restaurant could be it. You never know. Uh, but yeah, okay, I'm gonna go because now I'm just rambling about stuff that you didn't need to know about. And yeah, I'll catch up with you in a very tired manner at some point after work. Actually, there was something that I wanted to talk to you about and I totally blanked on it. And that is Notion, but it's so good. And that's what I spent yesterday doing because I couldn't sit down and read at all during work and I only had like snippets of time. I set up a Notion page and it's, it's so good. I know I've repeated that like 50 times, but I love this app. It's so, so handy. So I have my home screen of things that I want to do, like general to-do lists, food shopping, things like this. But then I have a whole separate like reading journal that's now online, which is perfect. So I do have my own reading journals. I actually keep it across a few different things. So I have it in here, which is my monthly TBR, the books that I've read across the whole year. Uh, and this is very, very basic setup. I used to do really complex setups and I, yeah, it's not happened, I don't like it anymore. But I have like my little bookshelf library which gets filled up with all the books that I've read. I've got the 23 books I want to read in 2023. 
this will be my favorite books page once I've finished the year and then it just goes into like monthly what I'm going to be reading any book hauls etc so that's that's all in there and I do like it and I will continue on with that but then I used this one which was 2020 2021 reading journal and I used the back of it and the back of it is my books on my physical TBR. So every time I buy a new book, I put it on this list. And this has been going since 2021. So I put on the top of the page the year that we're on and the amount of books. And then I tick them off as I go. And I do like this because it helps keep me accountable um, for when I'm actually buying books to when I actually read them. And so I enjoy that. I find that really good. And then I tried doing a series tracker, which is here. And I don't like this. This is messy. It's horrible. It's annoying me. So I decided to try out Notion and now I've got my reading journal on my phone, which is really, really handy. And I've broken it down into different parts. So I have another page that I can click on and go to my physical TBR, which I've then split into whether they're manga or graphic novel and then whether they are normal novels and then the sub like the genre of those novels and any sub genres that I like to keep track of. So I've got that all on there. I need to finish doing that. Um, and then I've got my series tracker, which I actually really prefer in this. It's just so handy. I love it. I'm going to see if I can screen record any of this and put this up here so you actually know what I'm talking about. But it's just so handy. I absolutely love this for keeping track. And then I've got my monthly TBRs, just an easy thing that I can then click and cross off what I've read for the month. It's so handy. My reading journals will never go because any extra books I read, I will always put in my physical journals and I love the year spread and keeping track of the books that I've read. But this is just gonna be handy for just being that little bit more organized. And I've also got like a YouTube video ideas part and where I'm up to in creating them and editing them. And it's just, it's so handy. I spent quite a bit of time yesterday just doing all of that, customizing it and having a grand old time. I will be doing more to it. Oh, somebody dropped something. Uh, but I will be doing more to it eventually, but I just, I really, really loved it. So now this quick update has gone on for much longer, uh, but this was something that I really wanted to chat about. I don't know if you like planning things, but I love it and I love it when other content creators talk about the way they plan their stuff because I don't know, I like that sort of thing. But yeah, so that, that was it. That was just letting you know that I have a, another way to plan everything and I'm loving it. Um, but yeah, okay. Now I will go and leave you in peace with the not so short update, which I'm sure you're used to by now. Good afternoon. I'm tired. <laughs> it's my first early, so we're actually on Monday. The plan wasn't to update you today at all. The plan was to finish work and go get my glasses, which, speaking of where are my glasses, you know what? Never mind. Uh, but I didn't do any of that because, in all honesty, I'm tired and I've actually got some editing to do. And I'm now seeing my partner tomorrow after work. So we're going to do get my glasses and having a little meal and everything tomorrow with him so that I can spend today just chilling out and editing and I'm in some really comfy clothes and my partner's hoodie which I don't know if he realizes that I have this one but he's not getting it back so it's mine now uh, so yeah com comfy clothes at its finest but I do have a bit of reading update for you so we'll just fly through that and we also need to talk about the Sailor Moon exhibit because well it wasn't even an exhibit, it was a collaboration with Jimmy Choo that they did with Selfridges and it was a Selfridge exclusive and I loved it so, so much. I loved everything about it. I think it's an amazing collaboration. Unfortunately, when I went there, they had sold out 
<laughs> and I was heartbroken because obviously I went there and they had everything on display and I thought that meant that they still had some stock and so I got so excited, so hyped for it and then they turned around and said no, sold out. <sighs> so you know, heartbreak and sorrow but it was great, I'm really pleased I got to see it. Also the Indian was pretty good actually and um, my partner really really enjoyed it. I'm someone that I like Indian but in all honesty if I'm gonna have a curry I'd rather have a Japanese curry, um, I just prefer that but I do really enjoy the small plates that you can get at Indians and I love that so like Indian restaurants they tend to have a small plate menu and those small plates are the best bit I think. So next time when we go because we definitely would go back um, I would personally get a selection of small plates and just eat that while my partner has an actual full main but yeah it, it was really good though I really enjoyed it really good quality for the price and everything it was really good but read and use so let me actually start with this book so this one is the mystery of the yellow room by gaston Lero, and this is the book that you all voted on for me to read for the month and this is a locked room murder mystery that inspired agatha christie and i looked into it and this one came out just after well a few years after the first sherlock holmes book so the scarlet what one was that one a Study in Scarlet by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Uh, that one came out first and then this one came out and this, I'm really enjoying it. I'm not far into it. I am up to page five. <laughs> so I'm really not far into it at all. I just read a few pages while I was on the train to see my partner yesterday, but it's really good. Like it's already got a really good feel to it. So I did read Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Lero and I liked it, but didn't love it. Whereas this so far I'm loving being like I've, re I've read four pages like it's not that far into it but everything about it feels really good and it kind of reminds me a little bit like the setup of dr watson and sherlock holmes you have the friend of the investigator that is telling the story and how he wasn't allowed to sell it like to sell it no to say it for ages and this is the first time that, that person is being able to narrate this story uh, for us readers and I, I love that. I love the fact that that's got that esque to it. Um, in the introduction of this book there is actually a note where it's talking about how Agatha Christie was really inspired by this book and in one of her stories, which one was it actually? It was a Hercule Poirot, I know I'm pronouncing that wrong, I'm sorry, but it was one of those books, let me see, it was mentioned right at the beginning the clocks, um, it was actually referenced, this book was referenced by Hercule about how he thought that the techniques used in this were amazing. So I love that, I love the fact that this book helped inspired Agatha Christie. So yeah, really enjoying it. Obviously we're just at the start, there's been a mystery, a murder has happened and we're just getting the bare facts. I am feeling like that this could be a good book to continue of an evening. So once I've finished editing to just sit down and read for half hour or so, it's not a long book at all, but it would just be nice to sit down and do that. Whether it happens or not, I don't know because I have made more progress with The King of Crows today. So I was reading this at work this morning and I am loving this book so much. I'm now up to page 103, Chapter Escape and it's just so good. So at the start of this book we are recapping what happened at the end of the third book which I do think is really helpful. I generally don't continue series straight away, it normally takes me ages to continue on to the next book in a series, although saying that this year it's been surprisingly good. Uh, but yeah it's very very rare for me to do that. So normally those recaps are really helpful. This time round I didn't need them, I didn't mind them though, they're done in a really good way so it's not feeling info dumpy and this book is continuing on straight after the events of the third book like there is no let up between them it is happening straight away so I'm even more happy that I've decided to continue on this book straight away and yeah the stakes are high things are going wrong if you haven't seen my other videos where I'm talking about this series this is the last book in the Diviner series by Libba Bray I feel like I must have done this intro already to this book so if I have I will edit out what I'm about to say and if I haven't 
then I'll keep it in. But it's basically a series of books that is focusing on a cult in some way. We have our main characters who are known as diviners. They have different abilities. They can range from all sorts of different things, from reading an item, so being able to touch an item and finding memories attached to that item, to having fire. Like there's a wide range of abilities but they get caught up in a series of murders in the first book and it builds and builds and builds to the point where everything is connected and it's fantastic and everything is going wrong and I I love it. It also does a really good job of looking at what it was like to live in America during the 1920s because that's when it's set and it does not gloss over what actually happened then so what it was to be gay or black or even Chinese American or an immigrant in general or a worker that's overworked like it focuses on so many different things and I love it and each book highlights a different part of American history that's happening during this time and it's fantastic so yeah loving this but which is why I'm saying I'm not sure which one I'm going to carry on with with the evenings because I also don't want to put the king of grows down I really want to finish it so I don't know but these are the two books that I will be reading this week. That is the plan to get these finished and we'll see if that actually happens. But yeah, that's it for this update. Always longer than what I think it's going to be. But I'm going to edit, do some food and chill out with whatever book ends up getting chosen. And yeah, the first early shift is always the hardest. Hi, new glasses. Do we like them? I like them. They're not going to be for everyone and I know that but I feel like I'm in my like a villain librarian moment when I'm wearing them. I just, they do. They remind me of like every villain that you see in a film just has some crazy quirky pair of glasses and this is those. I'm loving it. It's a villain librarian moment and we are here for it. But yeah, so that's those. These are just my new work pair so it's not going to be something that I wear every day but my work uniform is so boring that I wanted to go for something just quirky and fun and bold and just yeah so that's that's what these are but books books that's what we're here for this is what we're up to and uh, I've read quite a decent amount actually so with King of Crows I am now up to page 338 so I have 200 pages left of this to go I do love how floppy this book is like that's so satisfying thoughts um it's not as good as Before the Devil Breaks You, so I can understand why some people don't enjoy it as much. I think this book could be a lot shorter, however I'm still enjoying it. It's just not got the same tension and build up where it's like the Before the Devil Breaks You had me on the edge of my seat the whole time. This one is definitely more of a look at our characters and just being a bit of a slower in terms of plot like is not as plot driven is what I'm trying to say and I don't mind that because I quite like a character driven book I enjoy those quiet moments that we get with our characters in this our gang has been split up and they are all trying to get to the same place to regroup and it was a massive thing that turned the tide and that part of it felt a little bit more like more to it a bit more tension the rest of this has just been them traveling so it goes one of two ways with people either you really enjoy it because you like learning more about your characters and getting to know them or you really don't like it because it is long-winded and it is just them traveling from place to place and the different things that they're trying to overcome and a lot of it does feel a bit repetitive at times and so I can understand why not everybody enjoys it but as I've said, I am a character driven reader, so I'm not minding it at all. Am I as engrossed and not wanting to put this down? No, I can put it down after reading like 50 pages at a time. I'm quite happy to put it down and have a break, but I am still enjoying it. So it's one, I'm liking it. It's a cozy, com well, I wouldn't say cozy, it's just chill book. 
it's not taking a lot of focus to pay attention to what's going on so it works out well for early shifts because I don't have the brain power for it. The lead up and the way it's going to end I do personally think from the vibe of this so far is it's going to be a bit anticlimactic especially because we're doing so much traveling to get to this one point and I think there's going to be so much build up and drawn outness for something that isn't going to deliver quite as well so I can really understand why some people were let down with this, especially I think when it was originally published and you finished reading before the dev breaks you and you're waiting to find out what happens because that really was an explosive ending and then you get this and it's like, oh, well it's, it's good, but the tension and stakes are not there. So yeah, I, I feel like it could have been cut down, it could have been a much shorter book, but at the same time, like I say, I am enjoying it. So I don't know, I feel weird about it because I'm still enjoying it, it's just not as gripping as the third book. I do think that third book was probably the best in terms of pacing, plot and tension of what was going on, whereas this one I think is probably the weakest out of the four, but I still like it because I like our characters, so yeah. Anyway, a little bit left to go on that, and then I read a very very small amount of The Mystery of the Yellow Room. I am now up to chapter 6, page 38, and I just read this yesterday evening because I wasn't feeling like getting back to this. Like the first part of this book I was, and I just want to read it straight away, but now I'm like I don't want to read it in the evenings. I've, I read it when I'm at work and and that's enough. But that works out fine for actually getting through a bit of this. I didn't read loads of it, I was feeling really tired, um, but we've just met a reporter who is our person that solves this mystery. Um, so he's not actually a detective in any way, but he is a reporter instead. But he manages to sniff out mysteries and can get to know why things happen. Like he can solve it better than a lot of people. Um, so that's where we're at. The person that we're following, our narrator, he is a solicitor or lawyer? A lawyer, I think it is, that knows this reporter and he's getting pulled along, along with the journey. At this point we've just learned all the details of what happened in the room and the fact that the attempted murderer managed to escape this room and yet it should be impossible because the door was locked and barred from the inside, the windows were all locked and barred from the inside and there is no like hidden door or hatch or anything for this person to have got out through so it's very much a mystery on how on earth this person even managed to get out of this room and that's what we've just learned. So we're going to try and do some more clue solving and see what they can find and that's where I'm up to. I'm liking it, it's a nice cosy one, it does give me the vibes of Sherlock Holmes books and I like it for that. I think because of my bias towards Sherlock Holmes I still prefer those but I am enjoying this. It's a nice mystery book and we all know how much I like mystery books on this channel and it's been a little while since I've read a proper mystery and so I'm really enjoying that. A classic mystery is just something that I it's a comfort for me, like I really find them comforting to read and so this is really nice to just pick up and read a little bit of and just cosy up before bed. So yes, enjoying that. But that's it for the update. New glasses, made some progress on books, but that's it. That is completely it for this update. Yesterday was nice, met up with my partner, we went out for pizza so we did the whole plan which was really good and I enjoyed that and yeah, that's it. Nothing else to report. So. I'm gonna go have a shower, actually I might film a TikTok first and then have a shower, do a bit of editing and then I'm gonna cook and then we'll get back to reading and then we will repeat it all again tomorrow but yeah, see you then. Being honest, I'm, I'm not I'm not loving King of Crows, I'm really not, I'm almost at the end, I've got about 130 pages left to go and I'm ready for it to be over, like I really am. I never thought I would say that about this series because you know how much I've been enjoying it and that third book especially was just fantastic but yeah I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for this to be over. I, It's really repetitive, it's really drawn out and yeah it's not great. <laughs> it's a shame because I, like I said yesterday I am enjoying the look at our characters and it is an easy read but it's also just an okay read and I'm ready for it to be over because I am past that point of just wanting to read okay books and yeah that's what this is and I'm not I'm not loving it but it's what it is. 
so yeah I, I am almost done I'm going to finish it and hopefully the ending is really going to be like wow that was amazing and it's going to be so good but I'm not getting that vibe which is a shame it is a shame but I did read a bit more of the mystery of the yellow room last night I got up to chapter 11 page 104 so I don't have long left of this either I think it's about another 100 again another 100 ish pages to go I am enjoying this we actually referenced a book by Edgar Allan Poe that I read because he also had a mystery detective that he wrote a few books on and it referenced that in here which I really liked I love I love that as much as I didn't love Edgar Allan Poe's stories I do love reading them to like the origins of things to see where they've been inspired by so that I can pick up references and actually know what they mean so I really enjoyed that and this is developing at a good rate I still have no idea who's done it I have no idea how they escaped I've got I've got nothing <laughs> but I'm enjoying it nonetheless but today at work while I was reading King of Crows because I was just I, I just wasn't feeling it I, I got to a point where I was like I, I don't want to read anymore I actually decided to pick up an ebook and I went with The King of Elfheim Who Learned to Hate Stories and and that's by Holly Black and this is part of the Cruel Prince trilogy the world folk of the air world um, and this is a sort of prequel sort of well yeah I suppose it is it's just seeing things from Carden's perspective so you're getting little snippets short stories it's a short story collection and I am pretty much almost done with that I think I'm about 60% of the way through it's really quick and easy to read and each short story is about four pages long or so it's not long at all but I'm enjoying that and I'm pleased that I decided to pick that up because I, I needed the break I needed something that was just a different feel a different vibe to King of Crows because I'm just struggling and this while you know what it's not going to be a new favorite I like a short story collection I do enjoy reading short stories and just seeing a bit more of the world and also seeing it from Carden's perspective I, I like it it's good I'm enjoying it um not as much as the actual novels but it's good and I am interested to see it in a physical copy because it's got loads of artwork and on the ebook version it's all split up and broken up so it'd be really good to see all those illustrations I think those would be amazing in person so I might get myself a copy just to have on my shelves because that's I like short stories every so often just to dip into a short story when I'm feeling like I need a break from what I'm currently reading and it's a nice thing to just be like I'm gonna read that short story because I enjoyed that particular story so that's what I like using it for it's now got hella busy hella loud so I'm gonna go because it's a Thursday we always have my nephew over so I'm gonna go say hello and yeah catch up with you probably once I've finished these books to be honest I'm sorry that my thoughts on King of Crows just hasn't been amazing but I think it's always worse when it's the last book in a series as well because the first three were so good and the third one especially was my favorite and now this fourth book it's just it's plummeted the enjoyment level has plummeted and it's always so disappointing when that happens what do you find worse do you find it worse when the first book is worse but it builds up or do you find it when the ending's worse? For me, it's the ending. I can stick with the book. If it has promise and potential, I'm happy to go through it and read on just to see where it's going to go. But the ending, the ending should be good. And it's not. For me, at least. I'm hoping these last 100 pages change. Anyway, I am just repeating myself. I know you're all used to it. I know some of you say that you love the little rambles and you find it cute and stuff. And honestly thank you so much that's lovely um but I, I also know I do repeat myself a heck of a lot <laughs> so yeah I'm gonna go and I'll catch up with you when I've actually finished books and stuff and we hope that it's got better okay take three of trying to film this bit the first time the tripod just suddenly started falling the second time I didn't know what I was saying anymore so let's hope the third time's gonna work <laughs> because I have finished all three books as well the first book I finished was the king of crows yesterday and I have to admit I'm disappointed in it I was editing this weekly vlog yesterday and at the very start of this vlog I said how I was so excited I really enjoyed the first hundred pages of this book and I couldn't wait to see where it was going and that is true however from that point on it just fell flat we then had the next hundred pages where things were a lot slower and I didn't mind because I liked spending time with our characters I was really intrigued by the character growth and development that they were going through but then that repeated for the next 200 pages and it was just repetition it was constantly the same things happening again the same things being said 
and it can be argued that that was for a very specific reason because the king of crows needed them to be waylaid needed that to happen and be drawn out and slow them down and everything but i just feel like it was drawn out for far too long maybe if it was like half the amount of time 150 pages spent doing that i would then say okay that's a bit more understandable but there was just a point in this where nothing was happening and it was so frustrating, which then meant the last hundred pages of this, where things were more impactful and things were happening, weren't as impactful and I didn't care about the things that were happening to our characters because I'd got so bored. And so things that would have hit me emotionally didn't affect me in the same way. So I really understand it when people say that they see The Diviners as a trilogy rather than a quartet because this fourth book is so drawn out. I do think that the third book, they either should have put the ending on that book or split the third book in two and had two smaller books and then about 200 pages of this book in that. And I think that would have worked really well, but as it was, it just, it didn't work. And it's such a shame because as I've been saying, the third book in this series was my favorite and it was fantastic. And the ending of a series not to be good is just disappointing, but yeah. I mean, I finished it. I did skim read the end of it though. So yeah, the enjoyment level just wasn't there. I was no longer interested in it. And the things that were happening to the characters, I just, like I said, they didn't affect me the same way that they would have. So that's a shame. I then finished How the King of Elfheim Learned to Hate Stories. Um, and I really enjoyed this one. It felt like a Grimm's fairy tale. So it was lots of little short stories, but towards the end of the book, those short stories had a continuity with them and they kind of led on from one another. So it was no longer a short story, but actually just a proper book with different chapters. But I really liked it. I liked that look into Carden, seeing things from his perspective and also the Grimm's fairy tale element to it of this repetitive story that was being told that was getting changed slightly each time. And I really enjoyed it. This is definitely a book I want to get physically and it's definitely going to be one that I just dip into every so often. As I mentioned, that's what I like doing, of just picking up a little short story and being like, I really liked that part, I'm going to reread this. Also, I really want to see those illustrations in a physical format. So 100% going to get that. And it was so needed after trying to finish this to read that and just feel like, yes, this is what I want. And I think that's what I want to focus on this year, which I mentioned in the fairy vlog that I did about how I want to focus on fairy tale retellings and also the originals where they came from. I really want to focus on it this year. So that's what I'm going to do. And then this morning, I finished The Mystery of the Yellow Room and I liked it. I do think I'm going to stick to what I said about preferring Sherlock Holmes stories and even Agatha Christie. But I liked it. This one was just very dramatic and over the top at the ending, which I can forgive because our reporter slash investigator is only 18 years old. So he's got the flair for the dramatic going on. And I liked the mystery. I liked how it all wrapped up. I liked the different twists and turns that it was taking. I wouldn't say it's my favourite, but I loved seeing the inspiration and seeing how this book is going to influence Agatha Christie. And I like the fact that I've read this to know where all of that inspiration came from. I just thought it was fantastic. So for that, it was fantastic. For actually reading it, I just enjoyed it. It was a good book. I wouldn't say it's a favourite, but I'm really pleased I read it nonetheless. And it was good to read again with this book that wasn't holding the attention to then go into something that was just cosy and held up to exactly what I thought it was going to be. Not a new favourite book, but a cosy mystery that met the expectations that I had for it and that is always good. So yeah, that's it for this weekly read and vlog. So for today I think we're gonna put, I don't know what emoji I want to put, maybe I should put a magnifying glass for the mystery book because that was the last book I finished this week. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video please do give it that thumbs up, subscribe and comment to let me know that you're here. Those three things are so important to helping this channel grow and as always my social media links will be linked below and I will catch you in the next video. Did I almost forget my own outro? Yes. See you in the next one.